Well, hi there, and welcome along to What's the Word in association with Ladbrokes. I'm Tom Malone, joined by Brian Sheeran, James Mordant, and Brendan Duke this week. How are we all? Excellent. Well, Good. actually, I'm telling a lie. Fairy, <laughs> fairy House could have been better, so. <laughs> okay, well, I think that's a, an across the board kind of story, isn't it? Yeah, but Tiger won the Masters, though, so... Okay, yeah, you're fine, you're fine. <laughs> well, speaking of Tiger, we, we, we'll start with our horse of the season, because, you know, we're sort of wrapping, we're heading in towards Punchstown, we're wrapping, we're going to be on side at Punchstown all next week, by the way, so join us for that. But uh, we won't really get time to to uh, dig into things, like looking back too deeply. So, talk, well, you mentioned Tiger winning the Masters. Tiger roll, horse of the jump season? You could make a legitimate case for Tiger roll. I would make a legitimate but. case... <laughs> I would make a legitimate case for Paisley Park. Perhaps talking through my pocket, but I think also talking through just getting insight into the craft of training. Because I don't really know what trainers do. You know, kind of, you see them, they come to the trap. <laughs> what does your dad do? Yeah, well, I, I don't know, but I think they make it up as they go along. I mean, maybe. Uh, I, I don't get up early enough to find out when they're crafting. Okay. But you just, you see this horse, he can't jump, he won't settle. And then gradually, they've obviously doing a lot of work on him at home, and they, they teach him things on the track and what have you. And it comes, I mean, it's all about the journey, but if the destination is winning the stairs hurdle, that's a happy season. So no, that's not fair enough. Legitimate case. What about you, James? Yeah, I couldn't look any further, really, than Tiger Roll. Just the season he had winning the Boyne hurdle, then the cross country again at Cheltenham, and then going on to win the second national. So, Tiger Roll for me. Yeah, absolutely. Brian? It has to be Tiger Roll. I think few people, let alone horses, have a better social life than Gordon Elliott. So <laughs> for him to be having a better social life than him, it says a lot. That's how, <laughs> yeah. that's how much of a superstar he is. Yeah, absolutely. He's uh, definitely won the most parade. Actually, President Higgins was at um, Fairy House last weekend. It was a lovely moment. He actually asked to be pulled aside and introduced to Davy Russell, which is really nice, really, and had, yeah. a, had a word with him uh, on the side. And away from the camera, so really nice. So it just goes to show that Tiger Roll really has sort of yeah. Uh, you know, captured the public imagination. Uh, anyway, looking forward to Punchestown. Give us a horse that you are looking forward to at Punchestown. I have a few. Can I get okay, yeah, more than on, one? On. Well, yeah, look, yeah. Obviously, we were discussing there a minute ago. Obviously, it'd be brilliant if we saw Duban, but I'll, I believe it when I see it. Hopefully, he does turn up. But Gypsy Island uh, for Peter Fay, I really was impressed with her the last day. She went off the boil a bit, but she's really bounced back. She was snapped up after winning that ball and roll bumper by JP, and uh, I, I think she'll take some beating in the uh, the Grade Three mares bumper. And one that might go under the radar is uh, Breakin. It's the same connections of Album Photo. He won a maiden hurdle after something like 660 days off the track. Absolutely bolted up that day. I can remember Draconian winning one of these grade one novices hurdle last year at Punchestown. He might be one that might go under the radar. I'm not sure if he's going for the two mile or two and a half but mile. But there's so much racing at Punchestown. You can easily find a little a little place for him. You know, the likes of Max yeah. Dynamite and stuff winning the conditions hurdle there as yeah, well. I, I just think you might get a price on him. Um, and Manel Indo, I, I just think he's was different gravy in the Albert Bartlett. And some people might say just because he, of his price, he might have been a bit of a fluke. But the race didn't seem to fall apart. He did it the hard way. And I'd say he's the type that'll just keep on improving. And I'd keep say on progressing. Be, yeah. yeah. One for you at Punchestown, James? Yeah, it's going to be Sharjah and the uh, Punchestown champion hurdle. I think he'll get his ground this week. It didn't come up right for him at Cheltenham. And I just think if he gets a bit of good ground there, he'll be very hard beaten in the champion hurdle. Good stuff. And you, Chuki? Punchestown? Well, I'm excited, huh? I'm yeah. excited because I've consulted the Norwegians. The yes. ground is currently yielding. There is 16 mils due between now and the start of racing on Tuesday and another four mils due on Wednesday. And guess who's entered on Wednesday? Oh, carefully selected. Well, you know what's up, you know. So um, I, I think they'll run them because you would imagine with that rainfall, it won't be any quicker than yielding come the Wednesday. Yeah. Um, obviously, this, this will be known when people write the annals of carefully selected. This will be known as wilderness season. Mm -hmm. But his wilderness season could end in triumph. Uh, and I think I think it will. Um, I, I respect the Manila uh, horse, uh, granted, but uh, I think carefully selected is the future, and he'd win on Wednesday. Okay, that's a hell of a shout. Right, let's move on to the action at Sand Inn, of course, the finish of their season. Uh, we'll start the celebration chase at 3 o'clock. Uh, it's going to be an Altior celebration, I guess. Yeah, Altior is 2 to 7 at the moment. So, Royal 7 to 2. Diego de Charmil, 20 to 1. God's Own at 25. And Vosne Romani at 33 to 1. Is there a bet against them? I mean, or is there a distance bet? I think maybe at two to seven, could it be valuing the under distance? I, I watched. I was over Cheltenham for this, and I was. In, I actually thought he was beaten watching it live in runner. But then I was came back to the press room and was talking to the lads, and he didn't go above even money or something like that. So there's obviously no real, there's no real even angle betting in running because I don't know. Uh, I just can't really see him being beaten. Wins just, yeah. two to seven looks generous. One, one to five elsewhere. So, is there is there anywhere is there any way you can have a bet in this race, Juki? No, I just watched it. I, I would bet on the unders though because I think he'd have to make his own running again. 
uh, which is a little bit right. And so Royal will travel away. And so Royal's such a wicked jumper. He, he, he loves sand them and he'll have yeah. his ground. There's some light rain, but nothing of any significance. So I think Altior will win, but he'll have to grind it out again. So it might be quite similar to the Champion Chase, actually, although sand is a much more suitable track from the, the old course in Cheltenham. Yeah, absolutely. Right, James, on to the, uh, the big handicap there, the Bet365 Chase, a 25 to 4. What is this, around about 6 or 7 to 1 the field, dear? It's is it? actually 8 to 1 the field. Step back and talk is cheap. But at eight to one, the young master tens. Give me a copper at eleven. You have Beware the Bear, Joe Farrell, and Justice Sting at twelve to one, and it's fourteens bear. You like one here though? Yeah, I like give me a copper in this. I just think uh, he was fancied at Cheltenham. It just didn't really go right for him. And Harry Cobden up on board in the at three six five Gold Cup. I think he could take a lot of beating. What price is he? Let's eleven to one. Good stuff. Go on. Would you fancy? I actually that? agree with that. I, I was really looking at this for a while, and I couldn't make sense of it too much, but. You've obviously had good winners of it, like Monker Hoss and Tidal Bay or whatever, but I'm not sure if it's up to that scratch or, or up to that level this year. But I agree with uh, James. He was going into that race very inexperienced, but the talk was really bullish. And he did travel well up to a point. He was obviously beaten when he did fall, but uh, yeah, I think he could be still off a workable mark. Yeah, give me a copper for you, the pair of you. What about you, Duki? I've chanced to just a sting. Uh, he looks like he shapes in his race as a novice, he's unexposed, he shapes like a one pace galloper, which is what you want for this kind of race. <laughs> yep. He disappointed at Cheltenham, but maybe it was a Cheltenham thing, maybe it was a big field thing or what have you. I think, I think you can give him a pass for that, and if you do, 12 to 1 becomes a decent price, I think. Yeah, and on to the uh, select turtle at Sand End, then here we've got the uh, 10 going to post here. A few of these, you know, two mile five grade two hurdlers, they are what they are, but uh, how, how do they bet you? <laughs> um, you never call seven to two with discretion at five to one. Black up eleven to two, Mia Storm and Old Guard at thirteen to two, and it's seven or bigger about the rest of them. Go on, go on, Juki. You you have the winner for this team. Oh, the, the race is full of holes. That betting, I mean, I just would. I, I I didn't know the betting when I looked at the race. I thought Black up would, would be five, and on the blind side would be second five. So it just shows you. I, the race is, is a mystery wrapped in a riddle, but on the blind side, hasn't taken to chasing. He was an exciting novice. He's not badly treated by the conditions of the race. He'd be my nominal selection. Yeah, Ten tentative, tentative Ten pick. Tentative. Right, go on elsewhere uh, at Sandown. You like one there, Duke, in the 440. Oh, the Huntsman's son. This ran okay in the close, brothers. Probably ran a bit better than it looked. Actually, he was hampered at one stage, and I think he just floundered in the soft ground. He left better ground here. He's a wicked jumper, which is always a massive asset. And probably the hardest jump and test in racing. Uh, so Huntsman's son to bounce back in lower grade. Good stuff. Right, Brian, give us your Limerick Trixie here. <laughs> I have three for Limerick, yeah. yeah. Um, getting a bit worried that everyone else doesn't like it. <laughs> and everyone's like, no, nah, no, nothing yeah. in Limerick. So uh, the in the in the first, the 135, it's a six furlong Phillies handicap. I was really taken by her comeback. She just blew up. Uh, she, she got a bit of a freebie, but was entitled to blow up after nine months off the track at Goran. And so back down to six, I think she'll have enough pace for that. Then Clash Anishka. He didn't really seem to have the pace for six furlongs. That's so in the 210. That's Stepping in up the to seven, yeah. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, the seven furlong maiden, yeah, he just totally had pace over six furlong. I think that's what he wants. So at 210, I think he'll open his account. And only human in the 425. It's a one mile three handicap. Really taken by his uh, debut. It was a decent horse for Eddie Lyon, but debut for Jess Carrington at Leperson went well. And I'd say he can build on that. Yeah. So there's your three. There's my three. Three at Limerick. Right, let's move on to the action at Navin on Sunday then. Of course, the Vintage Crop stakes the Group 3 contest that highlight in their card. That goes to post at a quarter past four. Do we have betting for we that, James? We do indeed. Capri is in at six to five. Mustadier, 13 to two. Southern France also at 13 to two. 15 to two. Twilight Payment. Uh, Whirling Dervish at 10 to one with Chimera. And it's 14s there. I mean, the way Aidan O'Brien's horses have started the season makes this even more difficult than it normally is. Mm. Because sometimes you just be able to go, oh, well, no, Capri's not ready. They won't run. But, like, what is he, three out of three with his juveniles? A few of his other older horses have run better than maybe you would expect. Magical Capri won obviously. his first start last year as well, didn't he? I think. Hmm? Didn't Capri win his first start last yeah, year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Capri's a... Capri uh, definitely has his own ideas about the game, so there's... That could be a little bit unfair. No, Aidan O'Brien told me that, so it's fine. That was that's yeah. on the record. That's okay. I'm not a, he said he said he he has he can be tricky. So maybe catching him first time out could be the key to him. Yeah. I, I thought Whirling Dervish was quite interesting, but God he's something like eighteen pounds to find. But he could be a, a good stare. But yeah, just I think Capri could be different class to these. You'd hope so. What do you reckon, Juki? Just with, with the betting there, I think Capri does have a class edge and as Brian said, he won first time time out last year. Just I wouldn't have had as big a gap as six to five and thirteen to two between himself and Southern France. And 
they, they're going to get some rain there as well and probably be soft ground so it should be a decent test at those prices i'd probably chance southern france although capri is the obvious one yeah absolutely uh, elsewhere on the uh, on the navin car juki kwan you've been you have been you know pounding the pavements of the race courses over the last couple of months so you surely have a good eye for these flat horses at this age despite the fact there hasn't actually been that much flat racing but anyway 10 past three you like one 10 past three cava probably would want further than this in time um that's in, in the committed stakes in the committed yeah. stakes um she won first time up last year unexpectedly finished with a, 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 a withering effort in uh, fairy house uh, and then the form of her subsequent third to so perfect that couldn't have worked out any better so that's probably the best form in this race so I'll go for her. The 340 is an interesting race. This pink dogwood, uh, word around the campfire is that this is the one at the moment that they like for the Oaks. But I will take a chance on Chablis, who is a full sister to none other than the Pentagon. But also, other <laughs> friend other, of the show. <laughs> other, other good horses who didn't cost me a small fortune. So, but, but like the Pentagon, she's bred to one time and distance. How much time did you get to Pentagon? I, I was in that boat as well. I think, she's, I think she's going to restore the family honour and I think she'll put it up to Pink Dogwood and she'll probably be a price uh, because yeah. of jockey booking. And finally in the One fourth, and a half million guineas yearling she was. Well, she's impeccably yeah, bred. Absolutely, and she's a full sister to the Pentagon. Well, at, the, exactly, at, the <laughs> at the time, of they course, thought yeah. the Pentagon's going to take the world by storm. I mean, they weren't wrong. Uh, all the truties did. Uh, the, four, the 445 then, this Glenham Palace, I'm fairly convinced this hasn't had a chance to show of his best so yeah. far. And off a mark of 76, could be a nice lurker in the race. Yeah, absolutely. Um, anywhere else on the Sunday card, Brian, you, uh, you said you liked one. Yeah, one something. against that pink dogwood. I thought Tretius in the Jessica Harrington stable tour, she put it up as one to follow for the season. And when Shane Foley got the job with Jessica Harrington, he put it up as one of the horses he was really looking forward to. It's already beaten the pink dogwood in her maiden. And I think she's the one that is crying up for uh, crying out for a step up and trip. And one here, Union Gap. Now, I just thought he was a little bit interesting for local trader Noel Mead and Colin Keane when they team up together. They are doing a fair bit. On the flat there. Yeah, they're doing a fair lethal, bit of damage. Yeah. But I haven't seen Colin Keane over jumps yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So, trader a good record when they come back together. So, the horse is not from nine, but he's rated 59. So, she Okay, that's, that, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Well, we're going to have a quick word about the action upcoming uh, next week then. And, of course, our best bets uh, on the weekend as well. So, we're going to get one for... Punchestown or indeed Newmarket because Brendan Duke is here obviously flat guru uh, Brendan Duke and then our best bets for the weekend so go on Duke we'll start with you you're going to get one for Punchestown or indeed Newmarket so I'm guessing you're going to side at Newmarket I right? am going to side with Newmarket uh, I'm going to go for Iridessa in the 1000 guineas I was very taken with her comeback uh, she hadn't come on her coat she was penalised uh, seven four hours isn't her trip at all she's proven on the track which is very important uh, in Newmarket and I thought 14 to 1 was very fair each way price. Okay, so this that's for Newmarket, one for Punches Town, James? Um, well, I had one for each, but I'll go with Charger for Punches Town. I think if the ground comes up right, and well, I'll take on Dukey there with Fairyland in the 1,000 guineas if um, we're allowed to put up two there. Yeah, I just yeah, think um, there's a lot of difference in the betting on this one. It's 14 to 1 in places and 7 to 1 in places. I just think Fairyland... It's going to be the one to be for the O'Brien stable. You're with the, Fairland, yeah. yeah. Yeah, she's generally good at the start of her seasons. And uh, go on, are you going one for Punchestown and, and well, the market? Gypsy Island for Punchestown, but I've already backed Iridesa, so I might row in with Brandon Okay, okay. One. So lots of love for Iridesa. Right, now, time now for our best bets of the weekend. Go on, Juki, traditional tricksy, surely, for you. I'll try a traditional tricksy. I was struggling on Saturday, but I will go just a sting in the 335 in Sandown. I will go Huntsman's Son in the 440 in Sandown, and I'll have to go... To Sunday as well, Tom. I'll go with that Chablis in the three forty in Nava. Good stuff. James. Yes, um, I've taken on Juki again here. I'll go with give me a copper in the three thirty five at Sandown. I had to, to look through the fields at Wexford to try get a local one, but sure. What's the rush in the four fifteen at Wexford on Saturday and Whirling Dervish, and to top off a bit of an each way treble there in the four fifteen at Navan on Sunday. Good stuff. Brian? So at Sandown, the 335 on Saturday, we're going to go with Give Me a Copper. Yeah. Uh, on Saturday also, then the 135 at Limerick, the Antis, and then the last race at Navin, which I forget the time, is 515 Union Gap each way. Good stuff. Well, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Of course, next week, don't forget to join us every day next week on Facebook and on YouTube for our daily Punch and Stain previews. Until then, see you later.